Hi, this is Teal from PuckerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to review the Winsor & Newton watercolor markers. This is a rather interesting product. When I first heard of Winsor & Newton watercolor markers, I was thinking, why would you want to put watercolor in a marker? Well, personally for me, I like to use markers because there are many advantages. One of the best thing I like about markers is they are very convenient and very portable. So you can bring them anywhere very easily. You can use them when you're sitting down or even when you are standing up. And after you finish using them, you can just put the cap back on and put them back into the pencil case or into a box like this. And you can just pack up and go very quick. The disadvantages of using markers would be well, sometimes they can get a bit pricey, especially if you buy more and more colors. I mean, you can mix colors from the markers themselves, but sometimes um, for me, I prefer to buy individual colors instead of mixing because it's much faster. So it can get a bit pricey. Winston & Newton watercolor markers are available in 36 colors so the variety of colors is less compared to the watercolor tubes. You can buy the markers individually or you can buy them as a set. The set that I have here has 12 colors and with the set it, com it comes with this box like this. So let's take a closer look at the colors. These markers, they have two tips. One is a fine point tip, and that tip is hidden behind this tapered cap here. And this tapered cap has a slight protrusion here that prevents the markers from rolling around on the table. So this is quite helpful. And this is the tip. And at the opposite end, we have the brush tip. So this is the brush tip. It looks like some sort of sponge tip, not very different from the Copic markers brush tip. And at the end of this cap, we have a number here, 231. I think that's the product code. If you want to, you can put the sharp cap at the back of the other cap, but you can't do it the other way around. This will just uh, fall off. The main difference between Winston & Newton watercolor markers and other brands such as Copic, Prismacolor or Sakura is with Winston & Newton markers, they use pigments to create the colors. So in this case for yellow ochre, they used these three pigments to create that color. I'm not sure of the exact binder that is used. There's no mention of that, but at least we know the pigment that is used to create the colors. So compared to other brands, here we have a marker that uses pigment. Most other brands, they just use dye-based colors. And the difference between pigment colors and dye-based colors is pigment colors, they tend to be more resistant to light. Of course, it depends on the particular pigment itself. But generally speaking, they are more resistant to light and they can last longer. So the colors, they should be able to last longer. And this is made in France. Let's create some color swatches now. The paper I'm going to use today are the Winston & Newton watercolor marker pad with 300 GSM cellulose paper. This is cold press. I have with me 100% cotton paper. This is made by B paper. This is also cold press. And lastly, I'm going to use hot press paper. So I'm going to try and color this sketch with the watercolor markers. Let's start with lemon yellow hue. I'm going to use the brush tip just to create a big swatch here. I will leave some empty space below to uh, use with my water brush. I'm try I will try to blend this color into the white of the paper to see if I can actually do that. Next color is Catman yellow hue. This is a nice warm yellow. The ink flow is quite good, quite nice. This is yellow ochre. It actually feels like um, those aqua markers, like those water-based markers when I'm using it. 
So this is Alizari Crimson Hue. This is a cool red, cadmium red hue. This is a very nice bright red color. And this blue is cerulean blue hue. Notice that as I move my marker from left to right, left to right, there are no streaking marks for these three colors. Um, there's a bit of streaking marks for this yellow ochre, but not for other colors. This is Prussian blue hue, sap green. Notice here that I overlaid the first layer. So now let me try and overlay a second layer and see if I can get it to be darker. It appears to be slightly darker. I'm going to overlay this later on with a third layer to see um, how dark it can get. This is phthalo green. No, this is hookah's green dark. Dioxin purple. The markers are quite juicy. I'm not sure how long they can last though. And there is no way to refill them. So if the marker is used up, you have to buy a new marker. And this color is burnt umber. And lastly, we have ivory black. These markers, they dry rather quickly. After I apply them, after a few seconds, they, they are just dry. So this is quite convenient if you want to uh, do very quick sketches. Let me overlay this blue color again. Um, one thing about markers is if you use them on cellulose paper like this sometimes if you do a lot of layering the paper fiber might come off because the paper is not very durable if you do it on cotton paper which is more durable then uh, it's much less of a problem but generally speaking um, for me I don't do a lot of layering so this is not really a big problem so these are the 12 colors they look nice and vibrant but definitely not as intense compared to watercolor tubes so now i'm going to put my brush in water and try to lift out some colors or try to blend the color into the white of the paper and see if i can actually pick up any color so um, i can't really do that this does not work like those uh, water soluble crayons or pastel this is cadmium yellow so the colors they don't lift very easily and this is on the Winston Newton watercolor marker pad so I guess the only way for you to blend the colors into the white of the paper is to plan for it first and use the water brush or your watercolor brush and try and dab it onto the marker and then try and create that wash now even so when i use the brush with the marker tip it's it's still quite pale so now i'm going to use the marker i'm going to try and see if i can get some paint onto this mixing well here and try and use it like this and then add some water to it and try and create that gradated wash I think it's easier that way as I use this marker in this mixing well it doesn't seem like it deposited a lot of ink so I'm going to pick this up you can see it dilutes very quickly let me add some more it's very pale for this Prussian blue there are two layers of color I'm using a water brush now let's see if I can pick up some colors I think it's easier much easier to do it here let me wash my brush and move on to set green you might have to work on it a bit more to get that gradient so it might actually be better to use a water brush instead of a normal brush some colors they don't dissolve that easily so even when I try to brush 
um, the paint that is on the paper you still see this side here this is very obviously drawn with marker ivory black I don't like those bubbles that are coming out when I use the water brush this is what I can get when I try to dissolve the paint that is already on the paper with water some colors they are resistant to lifting such as these colors here and if you want to create a vibrant wash then you would have to layer a few layers of markers before you dissolve it with water such as the case for all these colors here this is cellulose paper and this is cotton paper and for some reason the colors on the cotton paper they are even more resistant to lifting up this is a Stillman and Burn sketchbook with cartridge paper. Um, very clearly you can see the markers and the colors they don't lift up. The colors they are transparent, very transparent actually. All the 12 colors are very transparent. Um, purple, Prussian blue, hookers green, sap green, umber and ivory black. They lift up. Uh, you can still create a nice wash but the marker marks they are still very obvious because these are not alcohol markers they don't bleed through the paper as easily you still see some impression uh, but I think this could be because I applied water if you were to just apply the marker on the paper I don't think you are going to see any bleeding through across to the other page be careful when using the markers with pencil and ink because it may smear the pencil and ink lines so this is graphite let's see if it's going to smear and it does not only that it's going to make the marker dirty as well so um, but it's not too big a deal because you can clean off the marker rather easily and next is uh, charcoal this is oil based charcoal so it's supposed to be smear proof but it's not totally smear proof that's the Krita color new roll and this is this is from this pen this is the signal gel stick 0.7 it's pigment ink let's see how well it resists smearing and this works very well and for this last box here this is noodleless ink it does smear slightly so it depends on what type of ink you use so before you use ink it's best to test the uh, markers on the ink on some scrap piece of paper first before using it on your actual artwork and now I shall use the markers to color this sketch these are just fruits this is lemon yellow hue I'm going to apply the colors very quickly some of the ink actually uh, came out even though they are supposed to be pigment ink and this tip is a bit dirty now so be careful when you are using ink with uh, markers like this and let me try this cadmium yellow to give this banana some depth and I want to put some yellow here as well so one nice thing about marker is I can work so quickly this is really fantastic I like it when uh, doing very quick sketches this is yellow ochre so now I'm trying to blend the colors together I'm not sure if it's blending that well this is cellulose paper so it's not that uh, durable I can I'm starting to feel the fiber of the paper coming off already let me switch over to this uh, red and this is Alizari Crimson this is not the red that I'm looking for but doesn't matter if I want a stronger color I would have to again layer the markers because the initial layer this layer this first layer is not uh, as dark as I want it to be this is a warm red 
So let me try and use this warm red. Now this is the area where I think using a brush would be better because with a marker I would take more time to color such a large area like this. Let me apply the second layer to make this darker. Now I want to apply some green color into the red to see if I can get a shadow tone. I think this is a bit too intense for me so I want to uh, use it on this palette here like this and use a brush to pick up some of the colors so it does appear to be a bit darker with the green I think it's best not to apply the water directly onto the brush tape because it dilutes the paint immediately so now it's quite difficult to get the green paint out so it's very uh, difficult to do that so I will switch over to using actual watercolor instead so I'm going to use this color here this is also sap green now using a water brush I'm going to try and pick up this area here and see if I can lift this I'm not sure if you can see the paper fiber is starting to appear so I can feel that the paper is starting to come out let me switch to using ivory black I'm going to use the fine point now so this is very convenient I'm trying to blend the colors to make the gradation a bit smoother but it's quite difficult because the colors they don't lift so this is the completed sketch just now I was coloring very fast and that is what I like about markers because you can use them very quickly the ink dries very fast and you can layer on another layer very quickly but with markers you get characteristics of markers for example here where I overlaid the colors you can see some of the colors they are darker so if you want to create an even wash you have to be uh, careful now with the new turn watercolor markers they are a bit difficult to lift the colors are a bit difficult to lift so it's a bit difficult for me to blend the colors together such as in this case here if I want a smooth transition between this yellow and the red it's very difficult to achieve that unless I pre-mix the colors on the palette if I apply markers like this and try to add water later on it's not going to work so um, you need some pre-planning to use some markers like this but the overall look and feel to me um, it still looks like a piece of uh, artwork that is created with markers rather than with watercolor because with watercolor sometimes you get that beautiful uh, transition of one color to another color but with markers it's a bit more difficult to achieve that also the colors that I'm looking at right now they are definitely not as strong compared to the watercolor tubes watercolor tubes you can get really very intense color here the colors they are slightly muted but because they are slightly muted I think they work well because um, you don't have to go over them layer by layer you can achieve a very natural looking um, sketch with color just by using one layer I do not use these markers often to create a sketch from start to the end instead I like to use them to touch up my sketches for example if there is an area on my sketch where I left out the color because I forgot to color it then I can go in to color it with the markers very quickly instead of using a brush I will have to mix it with paint and then go in and if there's another area I have to clean my brush and mix colors and go and touch up again but with the watercolor markers I can do those touch up very quickly and very easily so that's all for today's review if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below i will post a link to the scan image in the video description as well as a link to my text review 
that's all. I hope this review is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.